Greetings, this is uh, Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, and uh, we're going to do the continuation as part two of Sally's great uh, study, The Earth Shakes, Quakes, and Breaks, uh, The Great Earthquake of Revelation, Great Hail, Two Witnesses, and Other Things. We're going to read Isaiah 13. Now, let's start at verse 1, I guess. Isaiah is really one of those neglected books. It's probably the most quoted book in the New Testament by Jesus. There was a lot of messianic prophecies in the book of Isaiah. So let's read, without further ado, Isaiah chapter 13. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amoz did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commended my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. Even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. Even the Lord... Now remember this, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord. You see, the Lord sending these people. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation. You know what indignation is? It's extreme hatred. That's what indignation is. To destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. See, part of this is talking about the Babylonians coming and destroying Jerusalem. At least that's what I believe. But we're getting also, he's pointing to the end times. Because a lot of times, things that happened in the past are a shadow of what will ultimately happen in the future. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Oh, yeah. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. Ladies, you know, you know, uh, those of you that have had children, you know about the pain of childbirth. Well, that's what this is going to be. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Cruel cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. Woo! The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Wow. Can you imagine that? Uh, there's not going to be very many people left when the Lord gets done with this. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Ooh. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts 
and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Every one of them that is found shall be thrust through. Thrust through with what? A sword, people. And every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. See, here it is. They were, he was talking about the end times, but now he's talking about, uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, now they're talking about the Medes and the Persians attacking Babylon for their even though they did the Lord's work, Babylon attacked Jerusalem and took them captive for 70 years. Well, now the Medes and the Persians, um, when they take over Babylon, they're going to release Judah and allow Judah to go back to Jerusalem to start doing temple worship. Now, remember something, people. Uh, Persia, in modern day, is called Iran. Those are the Persians. They were the ones that let Judah go back to Jerusalem. So, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, who? Babylon. Which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, um, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate homes and dragons in their pleasant pl palaces. And her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged. See, physical Babylon was never to be rebuilt. But spiritual Babylon, all the mystery religions, well, that lives on today in various forms in the Protestant, the Catholic, Judaism, and... Uh, I guess you could say Mohammedism also. All right, let's take a, let's go read what Sally says. So she writes, well, uh, in Isaiah 13, she says, Well, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It'll come as destruction from Almighty God. The stars shall not give their light. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not shine. I'll shake the heavens and the earth and move out of her place in the day of his fierce anger. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 24. All right, let's go to Isaiah 24, start, starting in verse 18. Sally wants us to read, And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. Now, what's a snare? It's a trap, okay? For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. My note here, people. Uh, the Lord says in the earlier study, we read where the mountains basically are leveled. So... The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro, fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. 
and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Now, my note here. The prisoners. Um, the, you can read... I could do a study on this, but I'm just going to tell you. When it talks about the prisoners, it's talking about those that are, um, uh, my opinion, in hell. Uh, the prisoners are shut up. Matter of fact, you could read where Christ went to um, Abraham's bosom and preached to the Old Testament saints. So, uh, that's what they're talking about, the prisoners. Christ went to redeem the prisoners because all the Old Testament saints went to a compartment in hell. So, I did a study on that somewhere. All right, verse 23. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. 